Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, May the 8th and it is a gray, overcast, threatening to rain kind of day. But as I mentioned in a previous video, I will take moisture coming out of the sky as water as opposed to snow. So um, I'm totally fine that we're getting moisture. I recognize that we need the moisture, so I have no problems with the rain because I'm just grateful it's not coming down as snow. Today is Mother's Day here in North America. Um, so if you are celebrating Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to you. Um, I know for some that Mother's Day can be a little bit of a sensitive day for a variety of reasons, um, but I would just encourage everyone to uh, Spend some time with the people you love and tell stories about your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, uh, women who have influenced your life and keep the memories of those alive. Uh, my mother is still alive, so I'm heading over to my parents' place tonight to spend some time with them. Um, but my both of my grandmothers have passed away, but I do think of them on Mother's Day, as always. Um, and if you don't have children, uh, if you are uh, involved in a younger person's life, Mother's Day, as far as I'm concerned, is also for you. So happy Mother's Day to everyone, and I hope that you have a really great day. Um, thank you for the comments on last week's video. Um, there are a couple that I'm going to talk about, but we're going to talk about them when we get to a couple of sections later on in the video. Um, if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me and I hope that you enjoy what you watch. And if you are a returning viewer, as always, I truly do appreciate you, all of you who come back and, and watch uh, my stitching journey. So thank you so much for coming back. All right, what did I stitch this week? Well, uh, as I talked about in last week's video, I sort of gave you the concept of the rollout of the plan for this month. And the, the multiple projects tend to be heaviest in the first week of every given month. So that is no different this month. So what have I stitched this week? So, um, so it's the beginning of May. So I'm working on my May Cottage of the Month from Country Cottage Needleworks. That's what it is supposed to look like when it's finished, because it's not finished. And this is how far I got on it. Um, I should do that. Hang on, let me grab my... You'd think I would do this before, but we all know I don't. I feel like it's gonna be crooked. is fine. All right, so there is my May Cottage of the Month so far. It was an interesting week this week. I've stitched the house kind of twice. And why was that? Well, I have lots of props over here. So the call for colors to do the house are uh, nine DMC 959 and 964. And so I graciously stitched up the house using 959 and 964. So they do look like, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a light and one that's darker. They're not terribly different. Um, but I went, okay, there's enough there. These are the called for, um, I'll stitch it up and that's how it will, you know, look, it'll be fine. So I stitched it all up. I stitched up all of the 959 and all of the 964 in the house and got to the end and went, I don't like how that's looking. Then I went, well, look at it for a day. You know, same thing. It could be that you're just looking at it really closely and, you know, if you held, Looked at it from a distance, you know, the six foot test, maybe it will look different. So I looked at it for, you know, a day and a bit and went, I don't like how that looks. 
So this is going to be really hard to see. We'll see if I can, how well my prop is. I think it's going to be very hard to see, but we're going to try it anyway. So there's what the 959 looks like compared to the 964 below it. It didn't show up at all. So I was unhappy with that. So I unstitched all of the 959, went to my DMC color card, and went, okay, what's the next darker color? And the next darker color is 950. I'm looking, at my, I'm looking at my plots way back going, that's not right. The next darker color is 958. So here's the gradations going from 964, 959, 958. So I ended up doing this combination so that you could at least see a light and a dark and a light and a dark. If I had to do it all over again, I would stitch it with 959 and 958. I would do that combination, but there is no way I'm ripping out the how the other part of the house again. I feel like I've stitched the house twice now. So I'm I'm done with that. It's fine. If I were doing it again, I would do 959 and 958. That would be my combination choice. <clears throat> they also because, you know, I can't go with the called for colors. Um, the pink that's used around um, the windows and the door. There's a little bit more left to go over here. I'm going to do that when I do the birdhouse. The called for color for that is 3806. And it was bright, 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 bright. And I went, that that's too much. Upside. I've used pink before in previous months, so I just went with that pink. So I am using 605 for the pink in this house. Um, the roof is supposed to be done using Weeks Dye Works Bright Leaf, and I didn't like that. So I defaulted um, to what is becoming my go-to brown, darker brown for <laughs> these series of houses. I've used this on previous houses. And I'm using 3863. So 3863 will be is the roof of the house. It'll be the trees and uh, the branches that go at the bottom and the top borders. The other change that I have made, the called for green for the leaves on the tree and around the flowers is... Classic Color Works Frog Legs, which I have. And true to form, I went, I can't do that. It, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. So I am reverting to 3347. That's going to be my green. And if you know anything about me, you'll understand why I've made that choice. So those are my changes so far. I'm not expecting that I will have to make any more color changes on that project. Um, so made a decent start, but once I finished the house, I did a little bit because I uh, finished up the white that I had. So I got the clouds in and worked, started working on the picket fences. They're not complete yet. Um, Again, there's a little bit more of the pink to go on this one side of the window, but I'm going to do that when I do the birdhouse over here. Because I had stitched the house twice, I went, we're going to put that one down and we're going to move on to other things. It will come back. So the, the several days that I've had since I stopped working on this, good breather. So I'll be fine working on the May Cottage of the Month and hopefully by next week it will be finished. I also worked on, so um, the sixth of every month, 
I am working on stitching French Country Crown by JBW Designs. This is my piece that I am stitching um, as a commemorative piece for the Platinum Jubilee for Queen Elizabeth II. And it was a journey. So the 6th was Friday. So I was dutifully um, working, working away on my crown and getting very unhappy and getting annoyed. Which is always a really great place to be when you're working on your stitching. So what was I annoyed and unhappy about? Well, as I mentioned uh, last month, as I was stitching it up, I thought I was off because there were a few things that I didn't feel were lining up. I am doing this on a 28 count Navy Lugana. I am stitching this entirely with beads and the beads are 42010. And as I was stitching, I was finding things that were off and I just, I got to a point where I went, you are unhappy. I was stitching this with invisible thread. The invisible thread with the beads on a navy was hard. And as I said, I, I was unhappy. So what did I do? I completely unstitched everything that I had. I ripped everything out and I started again. But because we're in May, um, so I started this on February the 6th, which was um, the day that Queen Elizabeth became the Queen. And I'm stitching on the 6th of every month. And hopefully by February 6th next year, um, the um, hopefully most of, most of the stitching will be done in the design. Um, so we are now three months from February, which means according to me, I should be 25% of the way through the chart. So I have this chart in Markup RxP and so I unhighlighted everything and started again. I am now stitching it with, um, a bead, a beading thread, which is white in this case. Some of you might think, well, you maybe you should have done black. Because of the silver color of the beads, um, I felt the white was going to be fine and it's working out just fine. So I think, you know, even if you hold it up close, you can't really see the, the thread that I'm using. But by making that change, I'm stitching it better. Everything's lining up now. I have no problem seeing where I'm going. So I'm happy with this choice. Um, it did mean that I have to had to do a lot of stitching. I had to stay up very late on Friday to get to my 25%. And technically, I will say, according to Markup RxP, I'm at 24.9. But at that point, I had finished my length of thread that I was using. And I went, it's good enough. You're close enough to 25%. You can pick up that 0.1% next month. But I've completely restitched it. Everything's lining up. I'm much, much happier with this. I can now follow what, what I'm doing and where I'm going. So uh, for me, stitching on a dark fabric entirely with beads, invisible thread was the wrong choice. So I've now corrected that and I'm happy with how that's progressing. So this will be going away until next month. It will come out again on June the 6th for a day of stitching. I will say when I unstitched it, I lost some beads. So, you know, there's that, but nothing, nothing horrendously dramatic. And again, one package of Mill Hill beads is, you know, not the end of the world. All right. I also worked on my sampler of stitches. Uh, this is a stitch along that I'm participating in that is hosted by Sarah Hughes, the Stitch and Mommy. Um, this is a series of nine charts by the Drawn Thread. 
And the goal of the stitch along is to get a letter completed every two weeks because hopefully by the end of the year you will have the entire project finished. So what did I do this week? Well, I was certainly me this week. So here's where I'm at. I got all of J completed. It will look a little bit differently from, because I didn't necessarily follow the chart or the colors that were called for. So what did I do? So one, uh, the flower that's over here, uh, which is a jonquil, and I had to do a little bit of research. Other jonquil, otherwise generally known as a daffodil, but I really don't like daffodils and I certainly don't like yellow daffodils. So I took uh, the lightest yellow that I had in my color palette and did the center of the flower. This is very hard to see on camera and it's only a little bit easier to see in real life. Not dramatically, so I'm still thinking about what to do about that. So I did the center as a yellow and I did the petals around it as white because there is a variety that that's what it looks like. Yellow center, white, white petals around it. And I went, I can handle that. I was originally going to do it as pink, but it, I was actually trying to stay true to what the flower is supposed to be. And so I decided against that. The other change I made on J. So here's what the J looks like up close is this uh, series of Japanese uh, I want to say it's darning stitch, but as soon as I said that, I don't think that's correct. It's just called Japanese stitch. That is supposed to be yellow, and I was done with the... So I did the yellow here in the center. I did the uh, Jessica's down here in that light yellow. So not my dark yellow. Uh, the called for palette for the series of nine, there is a light and a dark yellow. So I did uh, the center of the flower and my Jessica stitches in the light yellow. And so I made this the pink because um, there was no pink in this, in this letter at all. But as I'm looking at it here, and I've, I've thought about this for a couple of days, I don't think I necessarily like the pink. I think I'm going to make this light blue. So don't be surprised next week if you come back and that's been swapped out. What else did I work on? Well, you'll be happy to notice that over here, there are no God's eye stitches. Why stitch the, the specialty stitch that you aren't looking forward to for the third time if you can put it off for yet another week, which is exactly what I did. I kind of went, I started with the J went, let's see how my progress goes and I was making good progress, so that was great. So I avoided the bad part. I have also switched out compared to last week. This was the palest of the pinks and I had talked about last week that I wasn't sure that I was happy with that. So I went one darker because I have four colors of mauve that I'm using in my color palette. So I ripped those out and restitched those. And I got a comment from Sarah, the Stitch and Mommy, because she, she's hosting. She's the one that came up with the idea of doing this series of charts this year. Because I had said last week, if, we sort of messaged back and forth about uh, on um, the letter I, the Indian stitch and the Italian cross that I really felt that they should be swapped. And anyway, so she left me a message and, um, before her video for this last week came up and she said, here's a spoiler alert. I didn't swap them. <laughs> and true to form, as soon as she said, I didn't swap them in my head. I went, well, then I have to. That's literally how it played out. She said, I haven't swapped them. And I went, well, I have to. <laughs> so I think that answered that question. So that's what I did. So again, uh, so I, I unstitched these and I've restitched them in and I've just swapped where they were. And I'm happy with that. I like how that looks good call and Lena had made a comment about that she said if it's if it's bothering you just swap them 
stop with all your dithering and just do it. And like I say, my impetus was Sarah said, I'm not swapping them. So I went, well, then I have to. Why that makes any sense? It doesn't, but that's what happened. So I've re-stitched I've restitched them, so I'm happy with those. I'm happy with this choice. I still have those God's eyes that I need to, you know, rectify. So still not done this chart. Just those nasty God's eye stitches that I need to get done in there. But all of J is, well, it's technically all complete at this point in time. But like I say, I think I'm going to take this out and replace it with a light blue. So that is... Uh, so technically I stitch on this on Sundays, um, but as I said, I'm heading over to my parents uh, this evening, so I don't know that this is going to be my stitching when I get home because it depends on what time I get home. I may stitch on this on Monday this week, which is totally fine. Um, but I feel like I'm in a good place in terms of uh, timeline. My J is not supposed to be complete until next, uh, that's not true. My J is supposed to be complete this week. So I feel like I'm in a really good position where I can get this restitched. I'll put in my God's eye one way or another. Um, and then I can, uh, and I really, I can't, I can't dilly dally on this anymore. I have to get these specialty stitches in because I'm going to have to scroll up so that I can um, start working on the letter K. So that's what I'm supposed to, so once I get the restitch this, God's eye stitches get in, then I can start working on K, which means I will be slightly, let's not jinx the whole process, slightly ahead on the schedule. And I really do need to get ahead because we all know that there's, we all know that there's some, some things coming up, just life things. That means I'm not going to have the ability to stitch on this every Sunday as I expect. So, yeah. Tomorrow I will work on finishing up GHI, get those God's Eyes stitches in, um, swap out um, the Japanese stitch, and start working on K. So I should make some, I should be in a, in a good position for next week on that one. Okay. What else have I worked on? So it's Mirabilia May for me, and I have some very specific goals on what I want to get accomplished this month. So the first one to get picked up is uh, Fairy Winter Dream, technically by Nora Corbett. Nora Corbett is the designer behind both Nora Corbett designs and Mirabilia, Mirabilia designs. So as far as I'm concerned, Mirabilia May incorporates designs from either of her design companies. The difference between a Mirabilia and a Nora Corbett is just the size of the design. Nora Corbett's are smaller, Mirabilia's are much, much bigger. So I worked on, I worked on uh, Fairy Winter Dream this week. It, and this too, it was an interesting week. I'm stitching this on 28 count Midnight Trist Jobelin by Fabrics by Stephanie. If you go to her, her website right now, the Jobelin is not an option that you can just add to your cart. Um, I don't know if, it, if, you, if you message her, if she would be willing to dye it. If you're interested in the Jobelin version, you can check in with her. I will say if you get Midnight Trist in something that is not a Jobelin, it will not look like this color. So just know that. So here's where I am. So what I got accomplished this week is I got all of this outer part of both of the wings stitched up. So I, what I need to do now is I need to start uh, the back stitching. So back stitching around um, the skin, as well as uh, all of the back stitching over the tops of um, the wings. Hopefully that will not take too long because then I can get started on all of the beading. Um, 
and all of the spots that you see in her dress here, um, all of those are beads that are yet to be put in. There's a lot of beads that go around the top of her head. There's things at the end of the, I call them antennas, anyway. But all of the cross stitching on this particular piece is accomplished. Just need to do the back stitching and the beading and there's gonna be a lot of beads, I just know it. So what I'm gonna do this week is I'm going to put, um, I'm gonna put this chart into Markup RXP and see how many beads there are because it will be easy all of the other all of the other colors I can just mark off because I have it I have all of it stitched it will become just beads so check back next week I'm hoping to make really good progress on this now after all of that big discussion on how awful the invisible thread was when I was working on the crown I'm still planning on attaching the beads on this particular chart using invisible thread. And if you're out there sitting there, you just told me you were having a terrible time with the invisible thread, which I was. Why are you choosing to use it on this one? Well, this one, it's easier to follow because the spots for where the beads are supposed to go are visible because there's other stitching around it. The part that made the using the invisible thread hard on the crown is that I'm doing it on a dark fabric and I'm doing everything using, I was using invisible thread for everything. So it made it, made it seem really difficult on this one because they're stitching around the beads, this will be much easier. So I will be going back and using my invisible thread. Generally, I do like to use invisible thread when I'm attaching my beads. It's just a personal preference, except for when I don't like it and then I change my mind. I always have the right to change my mind to something that works better for me. But, so that's what I'm gonna do for the beading on this. And like I say, check back in next week. I don't have the bead count um, for you at this point in time, because I do not have, I have not scanned the chart into Markup RxP, um, but it will be in Markup RxP for next week. And here is my um, bag of beads. So all of these beads are called for um, in this particular chart. My goal for this, uh, this month is to get all of this complete. The big challenge this week in working on those outer parts of the wings. Yeah, sorry, just have to get my Flossway bags out here. The uh, thread that is called for, for uh, those outer parts of the wings is the Karen Water Lilies Moon Glow, which was also used um, in the dress part. Just having a moment going, sure, let's do this. Of the skein that I had, this is all that I have left. It's really um, two, uh, the Water Lilies is a 12 stranded silk, which when you take it down to two strands is like six, you, when you cut it off, you'd have six length per, you know what I mean. But as I was stitching this, as I was stitching those, wi those wings, I very, I realized that I was gonna run out. And I did have another skein of Moon Glow in my house, in my stash. And again, this is gonna be really, really hard to tell. So, but there is the difference in colors between the second skein that I had in the house and my original color. This is a much more blue color. If you go back to when I was originally stitching this, um, I did talk about that I had gone out and I checked my LNSs at that point in time to see if I could get another skein that looked like this bluer one. 
and I couldn't. So then I was in a pickle. I was running out. I knew I would not have enough to get the wings done. There was no way. I wasn't close. So what to do? So what I ended up doing, just in case you run into this yourself, um, I, I used the new color of Moon Glow to do all of the bottom stitches in my X. And then I used the original color to do all of the top part of the, of the X. So this is the bottom, this is the top part. Now I did, I had already started um, the wings before using, uh, doing full X's using the bluer version of the, of the Moon Glow. But I'm going to hold it up close and then you can tell me if you can see where I ran out. I don't think it's, I don't think it's easily identified. I know where I ran out. Um, I'm, again, I'm happy with how this came out. As far as I'm concerned, by using the second skein of Moon Glow to do the bottom half stitches of my X and using the original color as the top, you still get that, you know, certainly as I was stitching it, I could see the difference between the two colors. And I think if you held it up closely, you would be able to see that the bottom stitch is certainly a whiter um, version of the silk than what the top stitch is. But again, from a distance, I think it's it looks just fine. If you are, if you have this in your stash, or if you're thinking about working on this this particular chart, I would just say when you uh, get your uh, Moon Glow Karen Water Lilies or whatever you're choosing to use, my answer is I used more than a full skein. There is nothing on the chart to say that you need more than one, but I used more than one. I tend to think that I, I'm reasonably frugal with my thread, but I, you know, and while I say that I, I have this much left, the answer is if I had fully stitched everything, I would have run out of it long long before long before I finished the wings uh, so just a just a cautionary note on that I love how she's coming along I can't wait to get the beads going on her I can't wait to get again it's just my background I, I deal with numbers I can't wait to figure out how many beads are in this so that was an interesting journey this week because I, like I said, got to the point where I was like, you are not going to have enough. And I knew that I had looked for a second skein before. And with all of the disruptions that are still going on in the supply chain land, I went, you're, you're not going to be successful, so you're going to have to come up with a solution. I'm happy with my solution. I'm happy with how it's looking. You can tell me in the comments down below if you can see where I switched my stitching method in those wings. Feel free to pause and have a good look. All right, so that is everything that I stitched on this week. I'm looking around. Yes, that is everything that I stitched on this week. Let's talk stash acquisitions. Stash acquisitions this week entitled exactly one thing, and I don't really have it to show. I bought Markup RXP also for Android. I laughed when I, so I was watching Stitch and Mommy's video this week, and she said, you know, apparently I have my ear to the ground, and the answer is I clearly do not have my ear to the ground, because if I had my ear to the ground, I would have been talking about Markup RXP changing to a different um, model, changing to a subscription model, starting at least two weeks ago. I really gave you like Sunday and I feel like Monday it was still available for a subscription if you, um, in, I did check on Tuesday uh, on my, on my devices and by Tuesday it had moved to the subscription model and the way that you can tell that is um, 
certainly if you go into Markup RxP now, it should say subscribe as opposed to buy. But I freaked myself out well enough that I was like going because Markup RxP is doing really well for me for all of my older charts. I felt I had to had to have it and I would rather I spent the extra $10 US um, to get it on uh, from the Google Play Store, which means regardless of what device I use going forward in time, whether I use an Android device or whether I use an Apple device, I am grandfathered into a lifetime subscription. So I did, that was my big purchase last week is that I bought myself Markup RxP on Android as well, because I just went, I, m I must have access to this <laughs> at all times. I must. Now, I haven't tried to do I haven't tried to do things crossing over between the two or anything like that. I just went I need to be grandfathered in on all versions of life so that I can do this. Uh, so that was my stash acquisition for this week. Um, if you are, are I know not everybody watches my video every week. Um, I think if you are a regular floss tube uh, watcher uh, like me, I'm sure that you are like me where you go, I am behind. I'm behind on my video watching. I'm behind on watching some new floss tubers that are out there that I've heard discussed. I'm behind and that's just how life goes. Uh, so I'm sorry if you got to my video late because I should have been talking about it for two weeks, but I didn't know. Uh, so by now, um, Markup RxP has moved to a subscription where it's an annual fee um, for the app. Um, so sorry, sorry about that. Not my decision. Anyway, I have it for both versions and I'm thrilled about that. All right, that was my stash acquisition for this week. We are now going to head into the topic. Um, if, if you're looking at the topic going, I don't really care about how you plan for, how do I really plan for a year, a year's worth of stitching? Uh, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. I hope you have a great stitching week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, all that good stuff. The topic for this week is actually because I got a message from a viewer who said, I've, I've watched your video from a couple of weeks ago that said, um, I'm starting to work on kidding up for 2023. I'm starting now because supply chain issues, etc., etc. I'm starting now. And really, she, it, very nicely, she said to me, um, can you give me more details? In my head, I read the comment, went, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, buy in advance. Yeah, I got that. That's the easy part. How are you, it's, how are you really planning a year's worth of stitching it? Are you doing it by week? Are you doing it by the number of projects? What are you doing? And I mean, in my head, I was just, I was going, she's going like, I need details which I totally get, I understand that. Uh, so that's the topic for this week. How am I really planning a year's worth of stitching? And the answer is, um, so I've, I've come up with this five-year plan, um, which I'm rolling forward. So as a year drops off, I'm rolling forward a plan. And really what my, what my five-year plan is, is it's really um, a series of starts. I'm really sort of taking the the charts that I have in my in my stash and I'm going let's let's start working on those and so I'm slotting them in um I'm slotting sometimes it's not even the specific design sometimes it's just this is a designer that I I have in my stash and I want to work on their stuff it could be as simple as that as far as the five-year plan goes and so the five-year plan um uh so 2026 is not fully mapped out. That's, you know, I've got about 40 to 50% of that sort of slotted in. And again, I'm not worrying about that one. Um, you know, kind of throwing things into there as I, as I move things around, certainly in the current year and the rest of my plan. But if you go back a couple of years, it was in 2020 when I decided that I needed to come up with a stitching plan. And so I came up with a plan for 2021 and I got really excited about it. 
and that's what's I started with 2021 mapped it out and went I love this I love this and I was excited and that's what started my five-year plan <laughs> it all started yeah go back 2020 there's some video in there going something about me going on about my five-year plan but my plan how I approached my plan for 2021 is different than how I approach my plan for 2022 which is different than how I'm approaching 2023 so I'm going to walk you through how those plans are working so originally when I was coming up with my plan for 2021 it was really um you know I'd been again I'd been watching videos and people were talking about it's like there's no point in having charts languish in your in your stash start stitching on them and whether or not you get them fully finished or whatever just start stitching on them um, again part of it is that I am a process stitcher so I'm not as hung up about saying I must have everything and get it, get everything finished and fully finished and displayed. It's not that I'm against that, but that is not my overarching goal. My overarching is just, I love the stitch. I just want to stitch these things. As we've seen, I am terrible about fully finishing items and that's okay. Cause for me, it's not, that's not my primary objective. It's not that I'm against getting that done. But my primary my primary objective is to do the stitching um, so when I approached my planning for 2021 it was like pick charts from your stash that you have loved for years and in one case not necessarily for years but um, pick those charts get them on your schedule and work on them stop leaving them languishing in your stash so when I mapped out 2021, I really only had one new start a month and that was going to be my focus and I just wanted to make stitch on that, you know, fairly monogam monogamously in those months so that I could make a really good dent. Um, in 2021, unfortunately, I was still stitching on the nativity, uh, still trying to get that finished up which took way longer than it should have, but it eventually got done. So I had a couple of things going on, um, but that was that was the overarching goal. Um, you know, I did a Lent piece as well as a March and an April uh, start. So I had a couple of things going on there, but really my goal in 2021 is pick 12 charts from your stash that you've had for years and finally start stitching them, make progress on them. For January, um, and it's, yeah, I still remember this. So for January in 2021, I picked uh, Just Nan's Lady Scarlet's Journey Part 1, 2, and 3. And I specifically chose that because it was going to be my new year, new start. And it was a series of charts that I felt reasonably comfortable that I could get it finished in the month of January so I could start my year off on a really positive note that said you started something and you finished something and that was going to be a great start to my stitching year so that also factored into the the charts that I put into my plan my July um, new start which ended up being the Mill Hill kit for um, St. Nick's Visit, the series, St. Nick's Quartet, see I've lost the name of it, that series of four kits that you can get, um, you know, that, what I was really going to start in July, changed about three times as we were heading into July, but by the time I hit July, I was like, you've picked really big charts, you've started Jerusalem, I started uh, The Banquet by Frida's Fancy Stitching, The Work of Christmas by My Big Toe, um, April's Blue Diamond by Mirabilia, you know, and I'd made good progress. I made good progress on those ones, but I was sort of going like, they're really big projects and you're not getting them finished in the month. By the time I hit July, I kind of changed what my original July plan was and went, just work on something smaller. It took me the entire month to still get that piece completed. Anyway, um, 
you know, I still allowed myself the flexibility to add things. So my reward for finally getting the nativity um, complete was I started my temperature tree for 2021. And again, that it became that because the temperatures that year were so wild. It was a very anomalous year in terms of weather where I was and it became the perfect thing. And I still love that stitch, still love that stitch. I haven't finished it. It's still coming up. Don't worry, it's, it's coming back. I have all the temperatures, which is the most important thing. Anyway, so that's, you know, I have a plan, but I allowed myself some flexibility about what I was doing within it so that I could have added or changed or whatever. But I certainly, when I started the year, I had 12 new starts that I had planned out and had them kitted ready to go. And again, when I changed July to the Mill Hill kit, kitting that up wasn't a problem because it came as a kit. So, so that was a really easy swap because you just went, okay, take you know, take out the one that I had originally planned and put in the Mill Hill kit because it's ready to go. Done. So that's how I approached my stitching for 2021. When I, in the summer of 2021, which is when I started to work on my plan for kitting up 2022, I was looking at my plan and I went, you need to... I was feeling the weight of all of the big projects that I had started out of the technically 13, 14, I'm doing math in my head. So out of the 14 projects that I started in 2021, three of them got completed, which is a really small percentage. <laughs> now, that's okay. I, I was happy with what I did in 2021 because I met my goal. My overarching goal for the year was like pick charts that you have loved for years and get them started. And so that was very successful and I was happy with where I got to. But when I was looking at 2022, I was like, not you can't pick as many big charts. Um, you know, let's look at Jerusalem. I did Jerusalem for Lent in 2021. I did Jerusalem for 2022. That piece is going to take a long time based on how I'm currently approaching it. And I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. But I said some of the projects that you need to work on in 2022 need to be smaller projects. And when I came up with that, that's where I went. I'm going to work on all of the... Whoops, that's not the right one. This one. I'm going to do all the cottages. They're small. I think they're all the same size. They're, you know, 77 by 77. You know, so it's a reasonable stitch. I am keeping up with this. So far, I have, I'm four for four. I fully expect, you know, in the month of May, I'm going to be five for five. And when I look at that, I go, fantastic. By the end of the year, you will have, if nothing else, you will have completed 12 charts. So that's 12 charts out of your stash that have been stitched. Um, they will have become just charts into, into a finished stitching. Not fully finished. Don't get yourselves excited. Get them stitched. Get them the stitching finished. And... You know, so that's 12. So that is four times as many charts as I got finished the previous year. So that's going to feel good. It's going to help with my numerical when I look at how many charts I have in my stash. If you can go, congratulations, these ones are all stitched up. That's going to be great. That percentage of finish is going to go up small, but it will move up. So that's how, so I started with those where I said, stitch something smaller, get them finished. I looked at them originally and went, you know, hopefully you'll be able to get them finished in like a week's worth of stitching. And I did fairly well on that until I hit um, April um, because I was fully in Lent stitching. That one took, like, I think I started, I did start it on April the 1st. I don't think I finished it until what, like the 20, 20th of the month because I got hooked on Jerusalem. And again, it's fine. It still got finished in the month. It was totally fine. Um, 
but I am, um, you know, and May, I certainly didn't get May finished in the first week of May, but hopefully that's going to get finished this week fairly quickly. So that'll be, again, not bad. Um, I also, towards the end of the year, um, is when Sarah said, hey, I think I'm going to work on doing this Grantha thing. Any, anybody want to join me on that one? And I jumped up and down like a wild thing and went, me, 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 I'm going to join that one. And even if she had changed her mind, I was still going to do it because I, again, I've said this many, many times. I love the concept. I love, love, love the concept. And now that I've tried it out this year, you know, pick something with an alphabet. As long as you can get one letter done every two weeks, you will have it finished by the end of the year. So I am carrying forward that concept into 2023. I will be doing an alphabet piece in 2023. Again, um, I the way that I've approached Sampler of Stitches where I'm stitching on it one day a week is working out really well for me. I had to do a little catch up when I restarted it. Totally fine. Um, so that's that's been great. So I, I'm, I, the cottage of the months I have loved doing. Um, a concept like that I will be carrying over into 2023. So that's going to be continuing in 2023. Uh, my doing something with an alphabet so that I can stitch on it one day a week and have something else that's completed by the end of the year, I'm continuing that. So again, so those are two things that I have tried out in 2022 that I have enjoyed and I'm incorporating into my plan for 2023. If you go back to what 2023 looked like in 2021, it had none of that. And I'm adding all of that. I'm also doing things where I'm looking at what I have, the whips that I currently have. There are large swaths of stitchers out there who are totally fine having a large number of whips in their, in their baskets, bins, shelves, whatever. Um, and I'm not against it, but I do think I have a mental limit where I go, if you get more than this, you're going to, you need, you will need to stop and get something finished. So in my plan for 2022, I also incorporated stitching plans for all of my carryover uh, works in progress, my whips, that I carried over from 2021 into 2022 to get them stitching. So you'll have seen that. So Frida's Fancy stitching the banquet, which I started on in 2021. By the end of February, I had four out of the eight charts complete, which really I was getting one chart completed a week, which was not bad. Um, and I have brought it out in 2022 a few times already. So I finished um, uh, chart five, six, and seven. I just haven't finished chart eight. So that one is one where it's really close to a finish. So I can tell you that you will be seeing the banquet again later this year because um, I want to get it finished. And so that, so each of those carryover whips was incorporated into my plan for 2022 because I wanted to make sure that they got worked on. Not necessarily that they were all going to get completed, but they all need, they all need to be worked on in 2022. So that was also factored into my plan. Now, we are in May. Um, and so uh, my plan for January worked out exactly as expected. Um, I had some new starts. So I also had uh, that Bent Creek Shamrock Row was, um, was scheduled to be a new start for me. Again, it was a smaller one, so I was hoping to get it finished, which I did. So in January, I got my Cottage of the Month finished, I got my Shamrock Row finished, and I got, uh, I want to I say at least two of the banquet charts, parts five and six, I think also got finished in January. So, so again, I try to schedule my January where I go, you've had a very successful stitching month. Because I go, it sets you up where you go like, January was great. I'm going to have a great stitching year and we'll let the stitching chips fall where they may as the rest of the year goes by. But I started off strong and well and I got my goals accomplished and that was great. I have, I also kitted up um, 
so aside from the 12 cottages, um, I had my uh, sampler stitches um, that I got all the stuff for by the time I hit the beginning of the year. Um, I also kitted up for 2022 a new start for every month. Now, what came into play, so I, again, so for me, it was just one because again, I have all of these carryover whips and some of them are larger. Some of them are not so bad in terms of getting them finished, but I wanted to make progress on them. So I kid, in terms of kidding up for 2022, I got all the cottages of the month uh, kitted up. I got my sampler of stitches kitted up and I got one new start per month kitted up. So far, um, the March start did not happen because I got caught up in Jerusalem and I was having a good time because I found Mark up RXP and went down that merry path and that's totally fine. So that project is going to get carried over into um, 2023 slash 2024. Um, again, because I already know, and I said this when I was working on Jerusalem, my Lent stitching plan for 2023 is different from my Lent stitching plans from the last two years because it is not going to be Jerusalem. But because I'm having a different approach to that, um, what that project is going to be is not necessarily the March project that didn't get started this year. But it's kitted and it's ready to go and it's going to get carried over into the basket for 2023 and we'll see what happens. Um, the April uh, start also did not happen. That's getting carried over um, because I got hooked on Jerusalem. I was making progress on Jerusalem. I wanted to keep going and that's fine. May, uh, my start is in Aura Corbett, but I'm only gonna start it once I have finished Fairy Winter Dream and I have finished, um, I looked it up. It's not Vixen. Anyway, whatever reindeer I thought it was, it's not that. So I have to finish Fairy Winter Dream. I have to finish the Christmas Eve Courier that I already have started. And I have to work on April's Blue Diamond, which I started last year. So again, so that's incorporating a whip from last year into my stitching plan for this year. I don't have to specifically get anything accomplished, but I need to get some, I need to have worked on it in the month of May. Once those two finishes are done, work on April's Blue Diamond, then, and only then, will I be allowed to start my May start um, that I have already kitted up. And again, if it takes me too long to get Fairy Winter Dream or the Christmas Eve Courier completed, what's going to suffer, I say this now, what's going to suffer is I may not have my new start, but I reserve the right to change my mind because it's my stitching plan and I may decide to start it anyway because I want to get it started. As long as I get Fairy Winter Dream and my Christmas Eve Courier finished, technically, if I start my other... Uh, the one that I've got kitted up for May of this year, technically I will still be down one whip because two of them will be finished and one of them started, so I will be net down one whip. Um, there is a month this year where I have, where when I was doing the planning, I said, you're not gonna have any new starts that month. Let's just make that a month to work on existing whips and reserve the right to be flexible. It could be any whip that you have. Um, I have whips that I have not worked on in years that you have not seen. Okay, one of them I think I showed once, but I have not worked on it the whole time. I, uh, I've got some whips that I have not worked on the whole time I've been making floss tube videos. And in my head, those are scheduled for that month where I don't have a new start because I just want to bring them out and start working on them. So when I'm looking at 2023, step one is what is your overarching goal? How am I really planning for that year? So I've got some, I've got some very specific ones. One, I want to do a small stitch every month. Um, and I've already picked out what those are. 
my my job now is to get is to get them kitted up um, so I know I know what those are um, I know what my fabric is going to be I like I say I worked on the spreadsheet so I have a list of my flosses so I can start doing pulling them um, whether it's the the fancy floss the hand dyed cotton floss or whether I'm going to go with the DMC check back next year you know I've so far what I've made is the spreadsheet I haven't pulled anything but I've made the spreadsheet so I could work off of that and start working on it but I have my plan for what those are going to be I have my plan for what my alphabet um, chart is going to be uh, that one is um, I've got the chart I think I've got the flosses I'm using a conversion so I'm using somebody else's stuff so I just need to pull that together but I've already picked that so again those are carried over those concepts of what I've learned in 2022 I'm carrying over into my plan for 2023 from a new start perspective I am scheduling um, aside from my monthly small and my alphabet one I think I'm scheduling 10 or 11 new starts in uh, 2023 so I'm really so besides the the monthly ones so there's 12 of those one for the alphabet one um, I think there's about 10 or 11 uh, new starts that I've got planned for 2023 so it's those those are what I'm working on kidding up right now I'm also looking at my 2024 plan and sort of saying you know what concepts do I think I'm going to carry over I'm the arrows on my so I've got a printed out version of my five-year plan and the arrows of things that I'm diagramming you know back and forth and all that kind of stuff I have a, a start um, planned for December of this year and I think I'm going to change my fabric on that so as again I'm looking at my plan about once a week drawing arrows crossing things off <laughs> changing things um, you know again my December I think the start is still going to be the same I think I'm changing my fabric and I'm going to have to order that fabric I've got to check one one place where I think they might have it in stock but I think it's unlikely so I think I'm going to have to order the fabric and I'm, now it's not a it's not a picture this plus or anything crazy like that because that's not going to come anytime soon um, it would certainly it certainly wouldn't get here in time for December um, but the fabric that I'm looking at I should be able to get in time for December um, I think I've made that decision so I think I need to put that order in um, but really so it's only you know don't get me wrong it's about 20 23 projects that I'm working at kidding up for 2023 actually I really actually I just said that out loud and went oh that's a good number 23 new 23 new projects for 2023 that sounds good that's not sustainable long term but whatever that's I like that 23 new projects for 2023 now I need to go back and count them up and make sure I've got 23 new starts I'm gonna have to make sure I actually start 23 new things in 2023 um, but that's what I'm kidding up so it's not uh, a dramatic amount um, it's not like Jen Lee from quirks and stitches I strongly encourage you to follow her on Instagram and watch her videos because I just her year of 222 is fantastic I cannot do 222 new starts that that's not that's not a level that I'm comfortable with and that's okay um, but that's my approach I'm kind of blocking off months uh, where I go here's how the month is is gonna go but I need to leave myself enough flexibility that I can add things or take things away when I'm looking at my June 22 plan I was catching up with a friend of mine this week and had a really good chuckle because I said my June plan has changed four times since the beginning of the year I changed it last week I changed it again towards the end of last week I now think I I think I have the plan for 20 for June of 2022 close to being solidified but it's changed multiple times um, with my changing of the plans you know I'm now 
think I may be in a spot where I need to um, kit something else up because I'm changing my plan. And again, I've changed the June plan four times. I haven't kitted up four different things, but I've changed the plan at least four times and it could be five or six by the time we actually hit June. So again, I'm not being so dogmatic that I can't change my mind at any point in time. Now, the reason why I start planning in April of 2022 for 2023 is that I can start having all these machinations and looking at what I've got, going through the stash, getting excited about things, changing things, changing my mind. Like I say, my original 2023 plan, <laughs> there's so many things that have been crossed off and changed and all that kind of stuff. And that's totally fine. I hadn't kitted up. Um, I hadn't kitted up 2023 when I was doing my five-year plan. I actually pulled a lot of those charts and I'll be just as fine putting those charts back into the stash as I change things out. But really, I just want to make sure that I've got things in the plan where I'm excited about going, oh my goodness, when you get to July of 2023, you're going to be stitching on this. Um, and again, so I can look at I can look at my 2023 plan and go, I'm excited about what's sitting in that spot. Um, it's actually now that I've said it, I'm, it's funny that I picked on July 2023 because I know what that project is and I'm not changing that project. I'm very happy with that project. I can't wait to get started on it. Um, when I was kidding up when I was looking, doing my 2022 plan, one of the things that I took into consideration is I looked at all the things that I had done in 2021 and I said for 2022, everything that you start in 2022 needs to be essentially a different designer than what you did in 2021. Okay, so that didn't work out for me and then November, May and November, I've got cross crossovers. So instead of having 12 new designers, I only added 10 and that was totally fine because I was happy with the plan that I came up with. And that factors into 2023 as well, where I'm still saying, look at what you've got in your stash. Um, can you add new designers into what you've got going? Uh, again, even in 2023, there is some crossover. Um, we've talked about this before that I've got some designers where I have a lot of charts in my stash that I have not stitched. So Mirabilia is one of them. I have a lot of Mirabilia and Nora Corbett charts. I've been really good about acquiring them, um, getting the specialty items for them, particularly the Mill Hill stuff. Um, I have done a terrible job of actually stitching them. So that's I, I think I can safely say to you, if you look at my Mays from now for the entire five-year plan, I think May for me is always going to be Mirabilia May because I have so many of those charts and I want to work on them. And so far, doing Mirabilia May for the last few years has worked out really well because I'm, I'm making progress. You know, hopefully this year I'm going to have two solid Mirabilia slash Nora Corbett finishes this year and make more progress on my big Mirabilia and start another one. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, over the course of the last couple of years that at least four of those charts have been started, some of them will be finished, that's fantastic. I'm making progress about getting my stash stitched and enjoying what I'm stitching, which is a great, which is really the whole point of this. So I'm not someone crazy, I'm not trying to kit up a bajillion tea things, um, you know, a total of 23 projects for 2023 sounds like a reasonable number. I'm also allowing flexibility that I can change my mind. Something Somebody could come up with a new design between now and the end of the year. It could come up in December where I go, I must start that. Um, but again, I'm trying to, I have got a plan where I'm hoping that my January will be a very successful January. Again, so that's that's how I'm coming up with my concepts. I'm, I'm really starting with an overarching concept for the year, factoring in things that have worked for me in previous years that I want to repeat, um, one small every month, uh, an alphabet one, a Mirabilia May. That's, that's some of the stuff that I've factored into how I'm doing it, looking at different designers. 
So I hope that helps you in terms of how am I really planning out a year's worth of stitching. Um, because again, it's not a crazy amount of stuff. Um, but I just want to, I want to get stuff in my stash started and I want to make progress on them. I want to say that they're coming out of stash and they're turning into whips, but I don't want to have an overwhelming number of whips. So it will also factor into my plan as I see how my stitching this year. So again, I've got, I've got stuff that I kitted up for 2022 that I have not started so far this year. Those kitted up things, I'm not sad that I've got them kitted up. I'm actually very grateful I've got them kitted up. And they're gonna and they're just gonna get carried forward into welcome to the whip basket of things that have not been started. I won't necessarily I won't necessarily factor them into my 2023 plan, but I could see them being factored into my 2024 plan because it will mean that they're already kitted ready to go. So that's how I'm more, that's how I'm approaching it. Um, I hope that helps. Um, you know, I, I certainly know that there are people out there who go, I don't do any of the planning. I stitch what I want when I want, which is otherwise known. If you hear people talk about sweewee, that's what sweewee is. Stitch what you want when you want, which is totally fine. I, there, I know that I've got viewers where they go, I am generally a monogamous stitcher until I get my projects completed. I'm thinking of Denise Jeffries where she does full coverage pieces and it can take her more than a year to get that piece stitched up. That makes her happy. That's awesome. My goals when I'm coming up with my plans is to come up with a stitching plan where I look at it and I go, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to stitching those things. I'm really looking forward to making progress. I'm really looking forward to about getting those charts out of my stash and actually getting them started. Not necessarily all of them finished, but part of the plan is also how are you gonna get finishes? So um, one of the things that I've got, you know, in, in my stitching plan for 2022 is that Frida's Fancy Stitching the Banquet is going to get finished this year. And I'm really close. Seven out of eight parts are completed. The eighth part is started. It's close, it's totally doable. But that, even from when I started this year, that was in the plan that that is one of my carryover whips that was going to get completed. It factors into some other things and whatever. Uh, speaking of Frida's Fancy Stitching, um, their traditional stitches has an exclusive design from Frida's, from Frida's Fancy Stitching in honor of their 20th anniversary, which I know was technically a couple of years ago, but we've had a couple, couple of crazy years here. Um, it is on the traditional stitches website. Um, I will add that the link to that particular design if you want to have a go look at that one. I've seen it live in, in person. I love it. Uh, I can tell you right now that that chart will be coming into my stash. For sure, for sure, for sure. I love that one. Um, so I will put a link to that if you're, uh, it's a smaller one. So if the banquet was intimidating because it was eight different charts and a much bigger, and you wanted to look at a small canvas uh, chart, um, there's that one available. Um, and they've got the options on the website that you can kit it up as well. So uh, there's there's that. So I will put that in the link to the notes below. Um, and with that, that is the end of my topic for this week. So if you were, for those of you who are wondering how do you really plan a year's worth of stitching, that's how I'm planning a year's worth of stitching. I will say that Jen Lee did a really wonderful video around how she was doing her planning for her crazy year of 222 new starts. Um, I will uh, I will try and find that and add that link in the notes below if you want to go back and watch how she was kidding up a crazy number of, of new starts for 2022. Um, Come, come up with your own your own goal, what you want to achieve when you look at your stash. Come up with a plan where you just look at it and go, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to get to my stitching. Leave yourself enough mental capacity that you can go, the plans are always made to be changed, adjusted, whatever, because my plan 
like I say, my June, June, which we are only a few weeks away, um, is at least on its fourth iteration. Could be five, could be six before we finally get there. Wait till we get to June and it will be a revelation to all of us, including I, what I finally end up deciding to do. So check, check back and see how that one works out. Um, so yeah, that's how I, that's how I approach my planning. With that, I hope you've had a good week. As always, uh, thinking about the people of the Ukraine. I'm 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 struggling with how long this is this is going on, and very worried about the people of the Ukraine. Um, I hope everyone is staying safe, 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 safety first, safety first, safety first. I hope everyone is staying healthy. I hope you're finding some time to do some stitching. Um, or if you can't do the stitching, maybe come up with a plan for the stitching because maybe that will be enough excitement to get you started on stitching. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, guys.